Hi guys, welcome to the next video on properties of cubic functions and graphs. So this video, we're going to learn about the properties of a cubic function and how to write one from a graph. Cubic functions have applications in physics and other 3D modeling. Uh, in fact, when you reach the third dimension, where you talk a lot about cubics, um, that's just kind of how um, physics works. And you know you're successful when you can write the general form of a cubic from its graph. So let's get started. Basic properties of the cubic function are that it has a one to three roots. So we're talking about zeros of a cubic, like a quadratic had one, two, um, zero, one, or two roots. A cubic is guaranteed to have at least one root. A quadratic could have no roots. Um, that would be in a mat where all of them were imaginary. A uh, cubic has at least one all the way up to three. Um, the cubic function has two or zero extrema, meaning local maximum or minimums. Um, you'll see them as crests or valleys on the graph. It has one inflection point, a spot where the graph seems to turn around and then do exactly a mirror of it what it was doing the other way. Um, it has point symmetry about that inflection point, meaning it duplicates itself. So it gets to that point and then it starts to do the exact opposite of what it was just doing. The range of a cubic function is the set of real numbers um, and brings up an interesting point that the domain is also the set of real numbers. So you can draw the uh, the specialized, I don't like the last part of that. You can draw the, the specialized R to uh, re uh, recognize that it's all the real numbers. And it, it takes you at least four points to graph uh, and define a cubic polynomial function. And usually the four points that you can do are its zeros and um, its y-intercept. But if you don't have um, three zeros, you can always use some of the extrema like local max, local min in order to do that. So let's take a look at an ex a general shape of the cubic function. Graphed here is the cubic function y is equal to x to the third power um, in function form. We would write that as f of x equals x to the third. Uh, functionally, there's no difference between f of x equals x cubed and y equals x cubed, but uh, they are both representing both represented by this red line here. If I was looking at something like y equals negative x to the third power, uh, the graph would look slightly different, and it would come down, I'm trying to get this as best as I can like this, um, and do the opposite. So that would be like y equals negative x to the third power. Just kind of giving you, it's poorly drawn, but it's kind of giving you just a basic idea of what uh, making the graph negative would actually do. Um, let's talk about some features, points and roots and points of inflection. Um, displayed on the graph are three roots. So if you take a look, I've got the zeros roots here. Um, I've got a negative two zero root, a positive one and a positive four root. Um, I have my y-intercept up here. It happens that this point here, this root is also the point of inflection. Basically what's happening is the graph goes all the way up comes all the way down, hits that point, and then it's a mirror of itself here to here. Like it is a true mirror. It's gonna cut through the mirror because this one did too, but you can literally see that this and this are symmetrical. It's three points away this way, like it's distance three, like it's distance three this way, and it's distance three this way. Um, and then you can kind of see the crest of the crest up here and the crest down here. And then you have your y-intercept up here, or excuse me, the y-intercept is pointed out up here. Um, it is the exact same height, uh, the same distance of, um, excuse me, The is the height here, and then if you were the same distance away, one here, it's about the same distance the opposite way. That's what I meant to say, excuse me, guys. Um, so um, you can kind of see what I mean by point of inflection. You can think of inflection as a reflection. So where does the graph kind of like reflect? On itself so it's like point of reflection uh, other things to other things to think about um, we have the extrema of the graph we have the local maximum we have a local minimum so down here or up here excuse me at the local maximum this 
is the highest highest point for an interval. Uh, we also have the lowest point for an interval down here at the local minimum. Lowest point for an interval. And then we also have the absolute max here and the absolute min. Uh, for a graph such as a cubic, the absolute max and the absolute min are both going to be infinity and negative infinity, respectively, um, because these graphs have ranges that are infinite. They're all the real numbers. So we can any number that we can think of will be on this graph at some point. So that has an absolute max and absolute minimum. Um, due to the specific shape of a cubic graph, we have a local maximum and a local minimum. And those local max and local minimums, um, we can find them on their, on our calculator. Um, and we're going to be practicing in class how to adjust our viewing window to, to find these, um, as well as use the trace function to locate their exact location. So domain and range of cubics. The domain and range of a cubic function, with a few exceptions, if you limit the interval, that changes it. But generally, the domain is negative infinity to infinity, meaning all real numbers. So all real numbers, all reals. And uh, it is true that the range is also, also all reals. These graphs are infinite in both directions. You could see that the arrow, um, excuse me, at the end of the graph on the previous slide, um, there were arrows to indicate that the graph went on forever, both up and to the right and down and to the left. And since arrows point in all of the directions, that root means that the graphs are infinite in both directions, meaning they have an infinite domain and an infinite range. So, writing the equation of a cubic from a graph. The first thing that you want to do is locate the three zeros of the function, looking for any duplicity if it exists. You want to write out the zeros as linear functions, being, linear factors being multiplied, and then we're going to practice our skill of multiplying the resulting polynomials out to get general form. So, each linear factor is going to be a linear binomial. So, x plus 3 would be an example of a zero, a zero at negative three, because remember it is the opposite. So you have an example of a zero at negative three, a zero at negative three uh, would require that you add three to it. So x plus three, means the zero is at negative three. If you set the equation, if you made the equation x plus three equals zero, you would solve it and get x equals negative three. Um, if you did x minus four, that would mean, that would mean that the zero is at positive four. So just remember, it's always the opposite. So remembering our quadratic skills, uh, if we use x minus 4 as a, fa as a linear factor, um, that means that the 0 is at positive 4. And if we use uh, x plus 3, that means the 0 is at negative 3. And then we got to multiply them all out. So let's take a look at an example. Write the equation of the cubic function. So you know what I did is I took the cubic function from the previous two slides uh, that we were referring to when I showed you the roots, the intercepts, the point of inflection, all that stuff. I'm going to actually show you how to write that cubic function's equation. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to locate the zeros here, here, and here. So the three zeros, the zeros are negative 2, 1, and 4. So then I'm going to write the factors. Okay, so the zeros turn into factors. The first factor needs to be the opposite of this. So what do I need to add to two, negative 2 to be 0? I need to add positive 2. What do I need to add to 1 to make it 0? Well, I need to add negative 1 to that. And then what do I need to add to 4 to be 0? And the answer is negative 4. So these are my three factors. So as I have it right now, 
these three factors right here are my equation in simplified or unsimplified um, factored form. So y equals all of these. So y equals all of these factors multiplied together. So what I am going to do now is I am going to go ahead and multiply them out. I am going to uh, use FOIL for the first one, and then I'm going to use a box because FOIL is going to create a, a trinomial, and I'm going to multiply it by a binomial. So I'm going to do a 3 by 2. So to help you keep track, I'm going to show you how to do it with a box. So the first one, x times x is x squared plus 2x. Um, and then that's the inner terms. The outer two terms is minus 1x. 2x minus an x is still positive x. And then 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. So the first two, the first two have multiplied to be this, and it still needs to be multiplied by x minus 4. So y equals, this is the next step here. So this transitions to this. What I am going to do now is go over here, try to draw the nicest box that I can. And I've got x squared plus x minus 2. And then I've got x minus 4 on the side. So I'm going to multiply everything out. So x squared times x is x to the third. And there's my cubic term, which is exactly what I need. x times x is x squared. And then x times negative 2 is negative 2x. And then I've got x squared times negative 4, negative 4x squared. So I know I'm going to need to stitch these two boxes together. Negative 4 times x is negative 4x. So I'm going to need to stitch these boxes together. And then negative 2 times negative 4 is positive 8. And if you look, that positive 8 is going to represent my y-intercept up here, which was 0, 8. So that's perfect. I should get the same number that my y-intercept is that I already know and can identify off the graph. I should get it as my final box here. So when I go ahead and write all this out and combine my like terms, I get y equals x to the third power. Okay, so that takes care of that box. x squared take away 4x squared is minus 3x squared. So that takes care of this in this box. And then negative 4x and negative 2x combined to be negative 6x. So that takes care of this box and this box. And then plus 8. And that takes care of that final box. And there is the general form, the standard form, of this equation up here. So that's it, guys. In summary, cubic functions are continuous functions with one to three roots. Um, they have a point of inflection, as well as extrema, such as local min's max. And they also have an absolute max min's, um, which in this case just are going to be infinity for the max and negative infinity for the min. Um, the domain and the range of a cubic are usually infinite. And we can write the equation of a cubic by using linear factors and then multiplying them out. So that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.